It's an inappropriate form of journalism. If you wish to practice that, that's fine. But don't ask others to respect you for it. If you want to, you, you can do it. You're a free American like anything you want. If you want to be uncivil and rude and ungentlemanly, that's up to you. But don't expect the rest well, of us to say, oh, well, you're there, one. Mr. Gergen. I'm sorry. Nobody sets policy in there. We try to be gentlemen. And obviously, you don't belong there. Weaving spiders come out here? <laughs> yeah, that is a three-pointer. Woo! Look how strangely he behaved when we brought it up. Why is he acting so secretive? And why did he get so angry when he discovered that we'd snuck in? You see, they take it very, very seriously. This is one of the hallmarks of the occult and secret societies. The word occult means secret. Secrecy is part of their religion. They revel in it. And when it's violated, they become extremely angry. How widespread is the occult? The answer is extremely widespread. Occultism in our society, and particularly in our government, at the highest levels of corporate America, is rampant. It is a well-publicized fact that the Reagans had every aspect of their lives governed by their astrologer. Imagine having your life controlled down to the exact minute that you give a speech by astrology, an ancient occult system that believed that the Earth was the center of the universe. Eleanor Roosevelt admitted that she performed seances and tried to raise the dead at the White House. Sixty years later, Hillary Clinton had her own seances, attempting to contact Eleanor Roosevelt. Prime Minister Tony Blair and his wife practice the occult every morning. Tony Blair draws a circle and then conjures the spirit that he calls the light. He channels it and makes decisions according to what the spirit tells him. The Blairs admitted occult activities are legion. And so was Adolf Hitler's well-known obsession with dark mysticism. Adolf Hitler belonged to the pre-Nazi death cult, the Thule Society, as well as the Thule Society. Both groups trace their lineage back to the Order of Death founded in 1776 in Ingolstadt University in Bavaria, Germany. Then, of course, it spread to the U.S. with the founding of Skull and Bones. You were both in Skull and Bones, the secret society. It's so secret we can't talk about it. What does that mean for America? The conspiracy theorists are going to go wild. I'm sure they are. I don't know. I haven't seen the web. Number 322. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first of all, he's not the nominee. And, uh, but, uh, look, I look for... Are you prepared to lose? No, I'm not going to lose. You both were members of Skull and Bones, a secret society at Yale. What does that tell us? Uh, not much, because it's a secret. <laughs> Is there a secret handshake? Is there a secret code? I wish there were something secret I could manifest. 322? Secret number? Uh, there are all kinds of secrets, Tim, but one thing is not a secret. I disagree with this president's direction. Aleister Crowley, who dubbed himself the Beast and the most evil man alive, was a fellow traveler with some of the most powerful people in British society, including prominent royals. The Church of Satan. The Temple of Set, the OTO, the Golden Dawn, Skull and Bones, Bohemian Grove, the Blue Lodge, the Scottish Rite, the 33rd Degree. It seems like there are hundreds of different occultic groups, but all they are are different denominations in the same religion, the Egyptian and Babylonian Mystery School. Albert Pike, who was the supreme grand mason of the entire world, founded the Ku Klux Klan. But you don't hear Jesse Jackson calling for his statue to be removed in Washington, D.C. Why is that? Because Jesse Jackson is a 33rd degree mason. Now don't get me wrong, most masons are what high-level occultists call porch masons or outsiders. They themselves are considered neophytes by those in the inner circle or those nearer the top of the pyramid. They're compartmentalized. They believe that their great work, as they call it, is to help society. But in reality, they're being controlled and manipulated. The Knights of the Secret Circle, 
the Knights of the Golden Circle. This is what high-level KKK members call themselves. But even low-level KKK members do not understand that the KKK itself is part of a larger Masonic organization. Most Masons detest the Klan, but they've never looked on their own temple walls at the paintings of Albert Pike that adorn them and ask themselves why the founder of the Klan is hanging in their temple. This is the power of hidden in plain view, a favorite trick of Luciferians. Where did this dark thinking start? This, this black spirituality. The central thread goes back to ancient Egypt and Babylon with the mystery schools. They knew that knowledge is power, and so secret societies were formed to guard the secrets of medicine, architecture, government, agriculture. Secret societies are nothing more than the first intelligence agencies. Knowledge had to be guarded. But over time, elites abused their control of the knowledge and used it to dominate their populations. And the same sciences of control are being used today. That's why the elite today relishes secrecy. They know that it is the fount of their power. They seek to dumb down the population, not just to hoard their secret knowledge to make us even more mindless more domesticated, like braying sheep to the slaughter. Their religion is the science of sophistry, the science of the con artist, the science of the despot, the dictator, the tyrant, the controller, the charlatan, the liar. They come to kill, steal, and destroy. They are parasites. They are anathema to free, dynamic human societies. Know your enemy. Stand up for love and life and family and resist the new world order and the Babylonian slave state our enemies are attempting to construct. I want to tell everybody out in TV land how they can come to the Grove where their elected leaders along with the big bankers and the heads of media meet along with some European royalty every year to decide how to run the country. You can fly into San Francisco, or you can fly into Santa Rosa. You can even fly into Sacramento, and you know, well, you just drive out uh, to Highway 101. You take uh, Highway 12 out west towards the coast. You took it about 10 miles out from the coast, right outside the little town of Monterio. And the town of Monterio, off the main drag, uh, you'll take the Bohemian Avenue. And it dead ends right here at the 2,700-acre Redwood Grove uh, entrance, where your world leaders... Um, among other things, set policy for much of the planet and dress up in black and red robes and worship, uh, well, moly.